Ottoman Reconquest of the Mora. The Ottoman Reconquest of the Mora took place in June-September 1715, during the Seventh Ottoman-Venetian War. The Ottoman army, under Grand Vizier Siladur Damat Ali Pasha, aided by the fleet under Capudan Pasha Kanem Hokumayamd Pasha conquered the Mora Peninsula in southern Greece, which had been captured by the Republic of Venice in the 1680s, during the Sixth Ottoman-Venetian War. The Ottoman reconquest inaugurated the second period of Ottoman rule in the Mora, which ended with the outbreak of the Greek War of Independence in 1821. Background Following the Ottoman Empire's defeat in the Second Siege of Vienna in 1683, the Holy League of Linz gathered most European states except for France, England, and the Netherlands in a common front against the Ottomans. In the resulting Great Turkish War 1684-1699, the Ottoman Empire suffered a number of defeats such as the battles of Mohacs and Zenta, and in the Treaty of Karlovitz 1699, was forced to cede the bulk of Hungary to the Habsburg monarchy, Podolia to Poland-Lithuania, while Azov was taken by the Tsardom of Russia. Further south, the Republic of Venice had launched its own attack on the Ottoman Empire, seeking revenge for successive conquests of its overseas empire by the Turks, most recently 1669 the loss of Crete. During the conflict, Venetian troops seized the island of Cephalonia Santa Mora and the Mora Peninsula, although they failed to retake Crete and expand their possessions in the Aegean Sea. The Ottomans were from the outset determined to reverse their territorial losses, especially the Mora, whose loss had been particularly keenly felt in the Ottoman court. A large part of the income of the Valide Sultan the Ottoman Queen Mother had come from there. Already in 1702, there were tensions between the two powers and rumors of war because of the Venetian confiscation of an Ottoman merchant vessel. Troops and supplies were moved to the Ottoman provinces, adjoining the Venetian kingdom of the Mora. The Venetian position there was weak, with only a few thousand troops in the whole peninsula, plagued by supply, disciplinary and morale problems. Nevertheless, peace was maintained between the two powers for twelve more years. In the meantime, the Ottomans began a reform of their navy, while Venice found itself increasingly isolated diplomatically from the other European powers, the Holy League had fractured after its victory, and the War of the Spanish Succession 1701-1714 and the Great Northern War 1700-1721 preoccupied the attention of most European states. The Ottomans took advantage of the favorable international situation, and secured their northern flank by defeating Russia in 1710-1711. After the end of the Russo-Turkish War, the emboldened Ottoman leadership, under the new Grand Vizier, Salader Damet Ali Pasha, turned its attention to reversing the losses of Karlovitz. Profiting from the general war weariness that made any intervention by the other European powers unlikely, the port turned its focus on Venice. Preparations and Opposing Forces Venice The inability of the Venetians to effectively defend the Mora had been apparent already during the latter stages of the Great Turkish War, when the Greek renegade Limbarakis Gerakaris had launched dangerous raids into the peninsula. The Republic was well aware of the Ottoman ambitions to recover the Mora, both for reasons of prestige and because of the potential threat to the Ottoman possessions in the rest of Greece posed by Venetian possession of the peninsula, with the Mora as a springboard, the Venetians might seek to reclaim Crete, or foment anti-Ottoman rebellions in the Balkans. Consequently, from the beginning of its rule, Venice's officials toured the fortresses to ascertain their state and their capacity to resist. However, the Venetians' position was hampered by problems of supplies and morale, as well as the extreme lack of troops available in 1702, the garrison at the Acrocorinth, which covered the Isthmus of Corinth, the main invasion route from the mainland, 
numbered only twenty forty-five infantry and barely a thousand cavalry. The peacetime Venetian military system, which consisted of a small permanent army and spread it among small garrisons prisidy in the colonies, also proved a problem, as it prohibited a rapid mobilization and concentration of a large force. Furthermore, such a force was essentially an infantry army, short in cavalry and hence forced to avoid pitched battles and concentrate on sieges. The Venetian militia surnight system was problematic as well, being plagued by money shortages and the reluctance of the colonial subjects to serve in it. For example, out of 20,120 men deemed fit for duty in 1690, only 662 actually joined the militia in the Mora. The Venetian army in the Mora particularly lacked cavalry. Only three dragoon regiments of five companies each, and the Croat cavalry regiment of Antonio Medin, with eight companies, were stationed in the Mora. The quality of both the men and their horses was judged as extremely poor, and peacetime losses through desertion or disease meant that they were never at full strength. In light of these facts, the Venetian governors in the Mora quickly concentrated their attention to the fortifications. However, although a detailed survey in 1698 found serious deficiencies in all the fortresses of the Mora, in 1711, Aniel Dolphin, charged with inspecting the situation in the peninsula, warned that unless the many deficiencies were addressed soon, it would be lost in a coming war. He also recommended that, given the lack of funds and men, and the inability of either the available army or the navy to stop an Ottoman invasion over land, the defense of the Mora should be limited to a handful of strategically important fortresses the capital Noplia, the Acrocorinth, the castle of the Mora at the entrance of the Corinthian Gulf, and the coastal castles of Madan and Monvasia. It was hoped that by concentrating the available resources and strengthening these, they could be made impregnable. Almost the only major new fortification undertaken by the Venetians during their rule in the Mora was the new citadel for Noplia, built in 1711-1714 on the height of Palamidi overlooking the city and the approaches to it. The forces available to the Republic in the Mora on the eve of the war were fewer than 5,000 men, and dispersed among the various fortresses. According to a contemporary register preserved in Montreal, the total strength of Venetian regular troops in the Mora was 4,414 men. men Noplia, seventeen sixteen men, three hundred seventy four Palamidi, under the providator general Alessandro Bon. Acrocorinth Corinth, three hundred thirty men plus 162 Albanians for covering the Isthmus under the providator straordinario Giacomo Minato. Castle of the Moro Rio, 786 men under the providator straordinario Marco Barbarigo. Mon Veja, 261 men under the providator straordinario Federigo Baduer. Kelefo, 45 men under the providator Paulo Dona. Zarnata, 83 men, under the Providator Bembo. Koran, 282 men, under the Providator Agustin Balbai. Madan, 691 men, under the Providator Straordinario Vincenzo Pasta. Aegina, 58 men, under the Providator Francesco Bembo Apostolos Vacalopoulos gives similar but slightly different numbers, 1747-397 cavalry at Noplia, 450 at Corinth, 466 infantry and 491 at Rio and its region, 279 at Monvasia, 43 each at Kelefa and Zarnata, 719-245 cavalry at Koran and Madan, the strength of the Cernide militias is unknown. 
These forces were clearly inadequate to confront an Ottoman army of 200,000 men, as the various reports received by the Venetian commanders claimed. The Venetian government also delayed in ending reinforcements to the Mora, the first convoy, under Ludovico Flangini, arrived in the peninsula in late March, but comprised only two ships carrying ammunition. As a result, in March 1715 the Venetians decided to concentrate their defense on Noplia, the Acrocorinth, the castle of the Mora, and Monvasia. The Venetian commanders hoped to be able to hold Navarino and Coron as well, but already in April, Dolphin judged that these would have to be abandoned as well. On the outbreak of the war, the Venetians called for aid from the other European states, but due to the Republic's diplomatic isolation and the preoccupation of the European powers with other conflicts, response was slow, apart from the Pope and the crusading orders of the Knights Hospitaller and the Knights of St. Stephen, who immediately dispatched a few warships. The major European powers offered help only after the loss of the Mora. Even after the arrival of these auxiliary squadrons, in July 1715 Dolphin only possessed 22 ships of the line, 33 galleys, 2 galleases, and 10 galleots, and was at a considerable disadvantage against the Ottoman fleet, which forced him to maintain a rather passive stance. Venetian appeals to the local Greek inhabitants were also ineffective, especially in continental Greece. Most of the Greeks remained either neutral or actively joined the Ottomans. The Ottomans actively encouraged this with proclamations that life, property, and privileges of ecclesiastical and administrative autonomy would be respected. News that the Patriarch of Constantinople had excommunicated anyone helping the Venetians in whatever manner also influenced the Greek attitudes. This was a severe blow to the Venetians. Many leaders of armed bands joined the Ottoman army, even where some Greek leaders, notably in the Mani Peninsula, decided to assist the Venetians. They made this conditional on the Venetian providing arms and supplies. In the event, the rapid Ottoman advance and the absence of an effective Venetian response persuaded them to remain neutral. Ottomans The Ottoman army in 1714 was still organized in the classical manner of the previous centuries, with a corps of elite Capiculu troops, notably the Janissaries, that formed the core of any expeditionary army, augmented by provincial levies and Timuriat cavalry. Ottoman armies were distinguished by the presence of large numbers of cavalry, which formed about 40% of a field army, but its effectiveness against European regular infantry had diminished much in the previous decades, as shown in the Great Turkish War. Still, it retained its tactical mobility, whereas the Ottoman infantry was a far more static force, capable either of last stand defense or mass attack, but not much else. The indiscipline of the Janissaries also proved a constant headache for the Ottoman commanders. During the early months of 1715, the Ottomans assembled their army in Macedonia under the Grand Vizier Siladar Damat Ali Pasha. On 22 May, Grand Vizier marched south from Thessalonica, arriving at Thebes on 9 June, where he held a review of the troops. Although the accuracy of his figures is open to doubt, Bru reports 14,994 cavalry and 59,200 infantry as present at Thebes on 9 June, with the total number of men involved in the campaign against the Mora placed at 110,364, 22,844 cavalry and 87,520 infantry. The cavalry numbers given by Bru are about half those expected for an Ottoman force of this size, indicating that likely the Ottoman commanders had to begin the campaign before their entire army was assembled. The army's artillery park comprised 111 light field guns, 15 larger siege guns, and 20 mortars. 
the army was aided by the Ottoman fleet, which operated in close coordination with it. Like the Venetians, the Ottoman navy was a mixed force of sailing ships of the line and road galleys. The Ottomans also secured the assistance of their North African vassals, the regencies of Tripoli, Tunis, and Algiers and their fleets. Commanded by the capable Capudan Pasha Canem Hokamayamd Pasha, the fleet that sailed from the Dardanelles in June 1715 numbered 58 ships of the line, 30 galleys, 5 fireships, and 60 galleots, along with cargo vessels. The Ottoman view on the campaign is known mostly through two eyewitness accounts. The diary of the French embassy interpreter Benjamin Brew published as journal de la campagne que le grand vessier Ali Pacha a fate in 1715 pour la conquête de l'amour, Paris 1870, and that of Constantine the Duikites, a guard officer to the Prince of Wallachia published by Nicolae Iorga in Chronique de l'Expedition des Turcs and More 1715 attribué à Constantine Duikites. Attack on the Mora. After a war council on 13 June, 15,000 Janissaries under Mirzafan Lukara Mustafa Pasha, governor of Diyarbakir, Ayalat, and nephew of the namesake Grand Vizier, who led the siege of Vienna in 1683, were sent to capture Lepinto, and thence cross into the northwestern Mora to attack the castle of the Mora and Patras, while the main body of the army under Yusuf Pasha and the Agha of the Janissaries moved on to the Isthmus of Corinth, and thence to the Argolid and South. At the same time, the Ottoman fleet had captured the last Venetian possessions in the central Aegean, the islands of Tinos 5 June and Aegina 7 July, and proceeded to blockade the Venetian positions in the Mora. The Ottomans operated with impunity, as the Venetian fleet remained in the Venetian Ionian islands. According to a report by Minato, the Ottoman advance guard entered the Mora on 13 June. The first Venetian fortress was the citadel of Acrocorinth, held by little over 300 Venetian and about 110 Greek and Albanian auxiliaries. The Venetian garrison was weakened by maladies, and the artillery was badly maintained and with insufficient ammunition. By 2 July, the Ottomans had breached the walls in two places. As the fortress was about to fall, a large number of civilian refugees began pressuring Minato to capitulate. Terms were arranged for the safe passage for the garrison to Corfu, and the garrison began leaving the citadel on 5 July. However, some Janissaries, eager for plunder, disobeyed Damat Ali's orders and entered the citadel. A large part of the garrison and most of the civilians were massacred or sold to slavery, including Minoto. Only 180 Venetians were saved and transported to Corfu. These tragic events later inspired Lord Byron's poem, The Siege of Corinth. After Corinth, the Ottomans passed by Argos on 9 July, which they found abandoned, and arrived before Nauplia three days later. Nauplia, the main stronghold of Venetian power in the Mora, was the best fortified overseas possession of the Republic. With ample stores, a garrison of about 3,000 men, and an artillery complement of at least 150 guns, the city was expected to hold for at least three months, allowing for the arrival of reinforcements over the sea. On 20 July, after only nine days of siege, the Ottomans exploded a mine under the bastions of Palamidi and successfully stormed the fort. The Venetian defenders panicked and retreated, leading to a general collapse of the defense. The Ottomans then advanced to the southwest, where the forts of Navarino and Coroni were abandoned by the Venetians, who gathered their remaining forces at Methoni Madon. However, being denied effective support from the sea by Delphin's reluctance to endanger his fleet by engaging the Ottoman navy, the fort capitulated. The remaining Venetian strongholds, including the last remaining outposts on Crete, Spinalonga, and Sauda, 
likewise capitulated in exchange for safe departure. Within a hundred days, the entire Peloponnese had been retaken by the Ottomans. According to the Ottomanist Virginia Axon, the campaign had been basically a walkover for the Ottomans. Despite the presence of sufficient material, the Venetian garrisons were weak, and the Venetian government unable to finance the war, while the Ottomans not only enjoyed a considerable numerical superiority, but also were more willing to tolerate large losses and considerable desertion, according to Brew, no less than 8,000 Ottoman soldiers were killed and another 6,000 wounded in the just nine days of the siege of Naplia. Furthermore, unlike the Venetians, the Ottomans this time enjoyed the effective support of their fleet, which among other activities ferried a number of large siege cannons to support the siege of Naplia. On 13 September, the Grand Vizier began his return journey, and on the 22nd near Naplia, received the congratulations of the Sultan. A week of parades and celebrations followed. On 10 October, the standard of the Prophet was ceremonially placed in its casket, a sign that the campaign was over. The troops received six months' worth of pay on 17 October near Larissa, and the Grand Vizier returned to the capital.